How do my artists welcome back another 20 UX stages? This time going for them 51. Oh, that was quick. This time going for them 51 all the way up to 70. First one there, Moile. Full fighting team, you know the score. It's exactly the same for this one. Going in, full fighting team doing as much damage as possible with the buzzwall in the first turn. Able to beat it in another one moves. One move. That's the right way of saying that. Now some of these stages, we do see a slight increase in the difficulty. A couple of them will take plus five moves. For various reasons, some of them only have three moves, so you have to beat them either in one move or use a plus five moves. And the plus five moves is sometimes just a little bit easier to go with. Rather than doing it 10, 15 times, hoping to get the right Pokemon in the right space, able to make the match, just sometimes using a couple of coins. And with all of these new stages, I think you get 300 coins every time you beat the stage for the first time. So there should be a little bit extra income just now doing some of these new stages. Which is nice. And there we go, I forgot to talk about that stage entirely. That was flaffy and it wasn't, there's not that much to really mention in it. So. It's a straightforward stage, Vaporeon next. There are quite a few water types in this next section as there was in the last section, as there probably will be in the section after this. I think I am tiring of using Sceptile in quite a few of these matches. It's not the best Mega, and I think I've tried to make it work, and it's still not fantastic. It would just be much better to have a Mega that gets rid of itself as opposed to trying to screen wipe. It often doesn't seem to work, it's very inconsistent. So after this set of 20, I might start using maybe a different Mega for some of these water ones. Perhaps going back to Sceptile occasionally. Try to make it work. It didn't, sometimes it does as it does there. But sometimes, it, as it does there again, sometimes it can just be a little inconsistent though. So I might try and find a Mega for some of these scenarios that may be a little bit better. Could even be Venusaur. Who's to say? And then next up here we have Charmeleon. A stage that seems completely made for Primal Kyogre. Can do a lot of damage in that first move as there are some breakable blocks on the stage. Then after that, going in with the Ash Greninja. A lot of these Pokemon will be fully leveled at this point. Ash Greninja, I think mine is up to the 15 that's available. And the amount that you're using a lot of these Pokemon, you'll see the same ones over and over again. Of water types, it'll be teams like this, maybe swapping out the Gyarados, maybe adding in a Volcanion. No Volcanions there. <laughs> Adding in Waylord, things like that, a couple of Wii changes, perhaps to deal with some of the disruptions, bringing Manaphy in. But this seems like established are some teams for the different types. You've got the Fire team, you've got the Flying team, Psychic team, Fighting team. It seems like quite a few of them are established. This level, I think you could go a much better route with um, t still taking the Shaman, but taking also Tapu Koko. Uh, and then as your other support Pokemon, probably something like Silvalli, and then perhaps Rayquaza, or Shiny Gyarados. One of those, uh, either that gets rid of Pokemon or that gets rid of itself, would be better on this stage. The Tapu Bulu isn't needed. The Decidueye, even though mine's is skill level 4, is still very inconsistent. The Sceptile isn't the best Mega to have here. And there's no real way to get rid of those Buizel without making matches with them. Which does take up valuable time. I still got the S rank, but there are better ways of doing this if your Pokemon aren't as highly leveled. 
Beyond that, the shaman was just fantastic, getting the sleep charm off so I didn't have to see any more disruptions, which is very good. But I'd say going with the try and make a Tapu Koko match the first couple of turns to get rid of the bulk of those boizels. Boizels, 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 whatever they're called. And then another water one, War Turtle here. Again, I'm still not completely happy with the team that was brought in on this one. Tapu Bulu, although it is powerful, its ability is not, it's useful in a few situations, but I think I do rely on it far too heavily in grass teams. Mega Sceptile, I've mentioned before, it's not the best, I've tried to to level up, I think it's about level 12 by now, just needs to be a little bit more consistent so I might just consider swapping it out in future grass teams. Still got the S rank, but I think there are better grass teams out there, or teams that can involve grass that are still super effective, that use some of the electric types. Then we are up against Hon Holucha next. Good psychic team, very strong. Two types of Mega Mew, two types of Mewtwo, shiny Mega Mewtwo and uh, Cybers Mewtwo, and then along with that Deoxys for the. Psychic combo, I forget the name, it might just be Psychic combo. And there we go, a couple of good matches with the non Mega Mewtwo, and you will be able to win that, uh, win this stage without any trouble at all. Next up is Ivysaur, one that is going to need the plus five moves because it's a stage that only has three moves, so you need to get it on the first move or you just get an A. So taking a plus five moves, it's only a thousand coins, and unless something goes hideously, absurdly wrong, you'll be able to get the S rank on this without a doubt. Even able to finish with more moves than you started with, as little sense as that makes. Next up here we have kind of the big one for this set of 20, Buiz uh, Mega Baneri, Melopene, that's the one, <laughs> Mega Lopene, I'll get there eventually, I've not been thinking. <laughs> so here, just trying to make some matches with the Beware as soon as possible to avoid the uh, disruptions, which aren't that bad all in all. And then after that, make as many matches with the Buzzwall as humanly possible, just to be able to do a lot more damage. I don't know why I didn't go for the Buzzwall match there. Probably should have done. But this stage, when you've got Pokemon like these, is not going to be too hard at all. A good couple of matches with Buzzwall and you'll be able to beat it completely itemless, completely thoughtlessly. It's a fair, fine fickle stage. 13 moves left. Wouldn't recommend any other team, that's good, it's fighting, it's fine, it's powerful, it will go in and it will be able to rip it up. Fighting style. And I raise max level after beating that. Then we have Bonsley. Bonsley, can you guess which team it is? It's a full fighting team. Matches with the Buzzwall. Don't know why I tried to make a Beware match there, because it's not got disruptions on the stage. Beware is still just very powerful, so I'd recommend bringing it. That or Machamp. Don't know why I tried to go for that match. Sometimes when you watch these videos back, you realise you messed up a couple times. And they've got 11 moves left. Not a tricky stage in the slightest. The next one here I'd say possibly is the hardest stage that we will face. Perhaps you might need something more than a plus 5 moves. Perhaps a mega start. I went with Tyranitar just as it's a good tapping mega. Very powerful. It's not super effective but it is incredibly good. There's also Silvalli, although that's not very effective on this stage. 
it's very helpful when you've got dark type, ghost type, and I think Tyranitar is rock type. So quite a few different types, so Valley, very helpful, trying to get a combo working. There will be a lot of Ghastly on the stage, Ghastly will uh, be disrupted into the stage, it'll be in the Skyfall, it'll be everywhere, there's ice blocks, as you can see, there's a little bit of everything. Best thing I could think of doing was getting the Tyranitar working as quickly as possible. And after that, just going for as many combos as quickly as possible, hoping for the S rank. Because Ghastly has got Spookify, it will occasionally disrupt itself into Spookify, which is nice. Does a little bit extra damage for your one ghost type on the field. And at a certain point, Tyranitar might just look like that, where there are too many on the stage, and after that you can combo it into submission. There we go, seven moves left, and a nice tasty S rank for just a plus five moves. I couldn't think of any better way of doing it, I tried going the full effective route, taking things like Shiny Tyranitar and Hoopa, none of them really worked that well. If your Hoopa is a skill swap to Typeless Combo, go with that over the Sil Valley, definitely. And next up another Grass Team. If you've watched the full video, you'll have already heard me complain slightly about this team. But here, it's slightly more effective, certainly the Tapu Bulu is far more effective, given that there are some unbreakable blocks on the stage, I think most of the disruptions do come as them. So it's fairly helpful to have, if you've not got the Shaman able to go off at least a match of four. Mine's is skill level four, and it still very rarely goes off, I'm not sure exactly what the rate is for Shaman's ability, but it doesn't seem to be too high, even at skill level 4. So if you're lucky with the Sceptar, you can get a good screen wipe, and then that's it beaten. 7 moves left, give it 1 shot, give it 2 shots, but it shouldn't take any items to beat this one. And next up here we have Divat. Tini going in Rayquaza, best mega, if you can use the shot out maybe once, maybe twice, you should be able to beat it, no problem, shot out is able to get rid of the Dratini, even though the mega ability wouldn't be able to have got something in my eye. There we go, I think that's it out. Oh look, it's almost a full fighting team, we've still got Buzzwool, we still have Meloetta, but there's also the addition of the Ashgrin Ninja and Agron, both super effective. Can you guess what I'm going to say? Make hits with the Buzzwool as many as possible, and if you can't, maybe Ashgrin Ninja or the Meloetta, because they can make matches of 3 or 5 and do that extra bit of damage. Next up is Combush Ken. This is another one that's going to take a plus 5 moves because it has only 3 moves. You may be able to do it without the plus 5 moves, but I would recommend a plus 5 moves. It's impossible, almost impossible, not to be able to get the S rank with the plus 5 moves. You may not need it, it's just nice to have that way you are insured that you will get the S rank. And next up we have Meowstic. Plus 5 moves yet again. This is probably where some of the stages get a lot more difficult. Well, a little more difficult before getting a lot more difficult. There is Hoopa. You know it. You love it. It's powerful. It's good. Mine isn't skill swap to typeless combo. It still has the risk taker. Mega Scizor, which is fairly good. It's good for just kind of working through 
uh, the stage, being able to perhaps give some combos. It's not very consistent in terms of giving combos, but it's a fairly good mega that can do a lot of damage when it is super effective as it is here. And there we go. 50 moves left. I don't think the plus 5 moves was exactly necessary. Give this stage a couple of tries, see how you do. If you're not anywhere close, just go in with the plus 5 moves. It's an extra 1000 coins, not that bad. I think it's only 800 on 3DS. But I'm a mobile player. Togetic. Togetic. It's easy. It's a it's a free Pokemon stage. Bring along Celesteela. It's very good here, just because there will be some Togetic on the stage. After that, you'll be able to combo into the night. The Solgaleo is very good here, just for when the Togetic aren't there any longer, and you can make better matches. And you should be able to beat it in just a couple of moves. I'll just wait here for that to communicate. There we go. Another S rank. Next up is Slowbro. This is probably after the Ghastly, I'd say the hardest, the second hardest stage on this uh, set of 20. If you make that match, that gets rid of the most uh, Slowbros and Slowpokes on the field. And then, if you can, making a match with the Celesteela. That's the only reason the Celesteela is here. Scizor, it can get rid of some of the disruptions, gets rid of up to five, but doesn't go off that often. Celesteela should only be made in the first or second turn if you can, if you can get a good match of four, maybe a match of five. If you're desperate, a match of three, and after that, the disruptions aren't too bad. Seems like a little bit of an odd team, but I certainly found it to be the best, most effective, and the most consistent. You can swap out the Mega. Gengar is okay, it's super effective, but you know, if there's something else you want. And there is another S rank in the bag. Now, lastly, here we have Umbreon going in shockingly with the full fighting team. Making matches with the Buzzwall, making matches with the Beware, trying to stop the disruptions, and then once uh, Lucario is working, all the better. This stage, not hard. Couple of good matches with the Buzzwall, couple of matches with the Beware, and you will be off itemlessly getting an S rank on that. And that ends these set of 20. Expect more very soon. There are 700 stages all currently available, so it will take some time to bust through them all. But there we go. Another 20 done. All S ranked. Thank you very much for watching, and how do my martists? Eggs! Eggs! E double GS eggs!